Hi everyone, welcome. My name is Marissa. I'm the STEM Program Manager at Lumination. Today I'm going to show you how you can implement one of our lesson plans in your virtual remote classroom. This lesson plan is on mathematics and it's aimed at year 7-8 students, so looking at calculating volumes. We're going to use some virtual reality and augmented reality apps for the students to independently learn how to calculate those volumes, come to an intuitive understanding of what's involved in that, and then they're going to find some containers around their house, measure them for dimensions, do their calculations on what they think the volume is going to be, and then actually physically fill them with water and measure that water and see what the differences are between the actual and the calculated measurements. So they really understand what's going on here. So let's start off by looking at some of the apps that your students can use. So this first one is VR Maths. This is one that they can load up, they can select, I want to understand, uh, calculate volume and then the shape that they're interested in, pop it into VR mode. At this point when this loads up they can put it into their headset and they can look around the room and this is the environment that they will see. They can investigate the shape in front of them, they can put the cursor over the different edges to see the measurements, they can use the buttons here to rotate that shape if there's any edges that are difficult to get to and once they've inspected that and they've worked out what the sizes of the, the different edges are, if they need some help learning what the formula is, that's over here. You can see that highlights the base and the height and this one shows you that it's the base area times the height that gives you the volume. Then they can use the measurements that they've investigated to calculate what they think the volume of that shape is and test their knowledge with the mini quiz. There's a few different shapes there. They can go through and do multiple ones or they can come back here. This is up to you. You'd probably set this for them. There's a few other um, exercises looking at volumes. Same deal as before, load it up, put it into VR mode and back into the headset. This time we've got two shapes and you can investigate using the tools the sizes of the edges of both shapes. You can see this one's got some smaller edges. Again, over the side is the reminder of the formula that they need to use to work that out. Or they can come over here and test their knowledge so they can work out which one they think is larger and test that out. So a couple of nice interactive ways to manipulate shapes and get familiar with what all the different terminology means and how it lines up to a real shape. There's lots of different things you can play with there. Another app that I like for investigating different shapes is this Arloon Geometry. This is an AR app, so they can just go to learn, they can pick the shapes they're interested in, and then they can actually place the shape in the real world through their camera on their phone. So you hold your phone parallel to the surface. You need a surface with some nice texture on it, so I'm using my rug here. And then you can place the object, and it'll stay put. You can kind of move the phone around from here, you can move the camera around, you can put things in the way, and it'll stay static as if it really was in the real world. Then you can tap the screen on your phone to interact with the shape. So here I'm selecting some of the faces and then I can actually unpack the shape and see where those faces end up when we're looking at it in a flat kind of um, view. You can investigate the definitions. So lots of information about all the characteristics of this shape. So this is where they can learn about what makes a cube or whatever shape they're looking at. You can select different faces and it will tell you the formula for calculating the area of the single face or multiple faces together. So they can learn about the formula here and how that relates to the real shape. Arloon Geometry also has some nice exercises where they can test their knowledge. So here we're going to pick what shapes we're interested in, how many exercises we want and how many characteristics per shape we're interested. Um, and what they have to do is select all the shapes that fit the given characteristics. So pick shapes where the lateral faces are equal and where the number of edges is more than eight. So in this case, it turns out hmm, all of them. So we pick them all and we test our knowledge. There's also true false. So this gives us a list of characteristics and we have to say which ones are true and which ones are false for the given shape, for the given prism. So here we, I'm just gonna reduce that a bit. There we go. So for this shape that's displayed, is the number of vertices less than eight, true or false? Is its height equal to its lateral edge, true or false? Are the lateral faces isosceles triangles? Well, I'm not seeing a whole lot of triangles there, but the height is equal to the lateral edge, so there we go. And finally, you can do calculations as well. Select your category, the minimum number of exercises here is five, but this would be a good little test at the end of the student's knowledge. 
So once they've worked through those apps and they feel pretty confident that they know how to calculate volumes, that they kind of understand all the concepts, they can do that in their own time. You can tell them perhaps a minimum number of exercises or a minimum amount of time that they need to play with those apps. But ultimately, one of the nice things about remote schooling is it doesn't have to be directly face to face. You can set this stuff and let the students explore it at their own pace. So once they feel confident with that, what you want to do is encourage them to go and find some containers around the house that line up with the shapes that you've been learning about. I'd suggest three containers is probably a sweet spot. It's probably enough to get the idea across. But if they've got some interesting shape containers, you could say that they need a few more so they get a bit of variety there. So for demonstration purposes, I've just picked three. What you want the students to do is get their containers, measure the height, the width, the depth, and take a photo of each container, or if they're uh, handwriting their report, they could sketch it out. So now I can go off and record. At that point, I would calculate what I think the volume would be for each of those containers. Once I've calculated that, I'm going to actually measure it and see how close my calculation is to the reality. So with small containers, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. We can just fill it with water, do, 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 do. And once we've filled that with water, we then want to measure how much water it took to fill it. So we can just tip the water back into a measuring jug. Okay, so in this case, the amount of water that this container holds is less than what my measuring jug can hold. So it's just a simple one to one. It's pretty easy for me to see there that it's about 800 mil that it held a little bit over. Um, so it's up to you depending on what tools the students have available, how precise you want them to be. So you might say that 800 and a little bit is enough. Or you might decide that you need your students to use tablespoons or smaller measuring jugs or something like that and get a more precise answer. That's that's your call and I'd probably be a bit flexible on that depending on what the kids have, have access to at home. So here I've got my next container. Now this is quite a large container. There's two ways that we can do large containers. In this method, what I'm doing is I'm filling it with known amounts. So I measured out exactly a litre and then I'm gonna measure out another litre. And then at the end, what I'm gonna do is measure how much was left over. So I know it's two litres minus whatever didn't fit in my container. I think that's probably the most accurate way to do it, but intuitively it's not necessarily the way that your students will think to do it. So it's up to you whether you want to let them know that they should take this method or if you want to let them work it out for themselves and have an experiment. So you can see here my leftover is a little bit over 100 mil. So you could just say that that's close enough in terms of accuracy. You've got the general gist that it's a bit under 1,900 mil. Or you can ask your students to use a tablespoon or whatever measurement tool they have to measure that last little bit of water. Oops, <laughs> always a little bit of loss here. But that's okay because when the students are writing up their reports, that's the sort of thing that they should note in them. They say, well, I measured this much, but actually I spilt a bit, so it's not quite accurate. Things like that are good observations. And I know this is a math lesson, but that's good science thinking as well. So with my second large container, I'm going to do the technique that I have a feeling most students will do by default, which is to fill it indiscriminately. We're not paying attention to how much water was in the jug before we filled it. We're just gonna fill our container right to the top. And you notice I really am filling them right to the top, not just to a top measure on the container itself. I wanna know the full volume of the container, not the marked volumes. So in this case, what I'm doing is I'm then taking that water and measuring it after it's filled. Now you can imagine that this is a bit fiddly and it's easier to lose water because it's very, very full. So if you lift it, it's gonna tip. So instead I'm using a small jug to transfer it. But that takes longer as well. So the method that we used before is just easier all around, I think, but, but it could be a, a good thing to let your students work that out for themselves. So I think this is also a little less accurate because you're gonna have that spillage. So it takes longer, it's less accurate, it's really not as good as the other method, but um, perhaps let your students work that out. All right, so we've taken one litre out. I measured that that was a litre. I filled this jug up to a litre and then I've discarded that water. Popped it in the kettle for later. And now that I've got the water level on my original container down far enough, I can safely lift it up and tip it out. So now I still wanna make sure that I'm only measuring up to my litre mark. There we go, that's about right. 
So I know that this held two litres plus a little bit extra. So again, you can say, you can say that it's okay for the students to tell you it was approximately two litres, or you can say, no, I need a precise measurement and get them to measure out that last little scary of water. So now what you want to do is get the students to write up their report. So ideally, they're probably writing this up as they go. So you might just get them to do this in a Word document or a Google Docs, whatever. Um, if they don't have access to computers, they can hand do it. There's no problem with that. Um, if they're going to handwrite it, then instead of photos, they might just sketch out their shapes. Totally fine. We really just want a record so we remember which measurements went with which, which container. So they should measure and record that measurement, then they should calculate the volume before they measure it with water, and then they can record the measured volume next. And then you want to encourage them to talk about what, why was there a difference, because there almost certainly will be differences. So I haven't written it here, but <laughs> spillage is definitely a legitimate reason why there might be some differences, but also noticing things about the shape. So we calculated based on um, a, a shape with sharp sides that are fully the measurements we took, whereas the measurement, the measured volume of the actual amount of water that it held was less, but it's got curved edges there. So that's going to be volume that wasn't filled with water. For our second container, the base was a little bit smaller than the top. So that also accounts for some lost volume there for a difference between the calculated volume and the actual measured volume. So you just want them thinking about those things um, and connecting what they're doing in maths to the real world. So you might want to even get them to say afterwards why this might be, why it's important for us to understand this, even just in the context of baking, which is going to feel pretty familiar when they've gone and raided the, the cupboard for all the different containers. Having them measured, like for the second container especially, it's got measurements on it. Did those measurements actually match up as I poured water in? And yes, they did, but the, the container as a whole didn't hold as much as I calculated it might. So yeah, get them to think about those things, get them to try and make connections between what they're doing um, in maths and how that applies in the real world. So I hope you enjoyed that lesson. I hope the students enjoy it, gets them a bit of a bit of tech time at the start to investigate the concepts but then get them hands-on and, and messy but in a pretty harmless way in the kitchen so hopefully parents will be okay with that. Um, and yeah, enjoy. If you've got any questions about anything, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to help you work through any of the lesson plans that we've put together.